What's up everybody, my name is Bryce, aka Just Last Subs, and welcome back to another video. And in today's video, we are going to be covering all the new Shonen Jump series, and there are four. And without further ado, let's get right into this video. Alright, so it's been a little bit since I've actually done one of these new Shonen Jump videos, and I'm excited to get back into it because I skipped the last run of new series. They were okay, and I really am not a huge fan of a lot of them. Hard Boiled and like, Cop and Dolphin was the one that I was most hopeful for, but it kind of got out of the way and like did a bunch of like weird stuff with the story and it went off the rails and was like, I don't know. Wait, like the stuff that was really cool with it, like the next 10 chapters didn't cover it, and I don't know if it was trying to save itself or what it was doing, but I think that one's up for cancellation i think the high school family one might be up for elimination i don't know but that one is not too good either but in this video these series actually have a lot of potential in my opinion they are very good a lot better than the last run and i can't wait to get into these we're going to be ordering them from my least favorite to my most favorite and without further ado let's start at number four and that is i tell c before we get into this video, please make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. It means a lot and lets me know that you guys enjoy these types of videos. And without further ado, enjoy the video. Like, comment, subscribe. So, I Tell C is a detective story about the detective, Ayo, who is a girl detective who ends up falling in love with the criminals that she is trying to catch, and that is how she catches the criminals. They end up turning themselves in because she is so over the top and insanely in love with them that all the crazy stuff they do to them is they decide that jail time is better than the girl. <laughs> Man, that is a fear of women I've never seen. But this is a mystery story at its core. This story follows those different crimes and criminals about how Aoi catches them by stalking, following them, but we also get the two detectives of the story who also are the more run-of-the-mill detectives who are kind of boring in my opinion and not really that interesting, especially the one who is all by the books. I mean, how many times have we seen a by the books guy who's going to end up going more off books later on? It just feels like that's what's going to happen and Aoi's also going to like do that. It's also kind of a rom-com element between these two or a romance element between Aoi and Saka. I believe his name is. Yeah, Sakan and these two characters kind of have something that seems like they're going to be building a relationship. But overall, the mystery elements of the first chapter was pretty good. The setup for the second chapter was interesting and I liked it. But I don't know how I feel about the longevity of this series because what's going to really change? Is it going to be those two working forward and falling in love with each other and then she ends up stop falling in love with criminals? Which would basically ruin her entire point of what her character is because she doesn't fall in love with them. She's not going to try to find them or is she going to become a real detective? There's a lot of things in this story where I'm like... I don't know how the future holds or what could really happen, and I feel like it could get really messy with one little trip up for it. Sakon and the other detective, who I can't remember the name, are kind of very boring at the moment. I'm not going to lie. They're not that interesting in characters. They're really basic. One doesn't care about his job, lets everything go on, and just does whatever that he's told and doesn't really care. And the other one, Sakon, doesn't really do anything that's not by the books, and he is really into that, and that's all he does. And so he's that hard-boiled cop, and is like, oh my god, here we go again. It's very basic, but still interesting with uh, Aoi, Ai, Ayo, sorry, I can never say her name right, but she is the bread and butter of this series. If you don't like Aoi or Ayo, she is going to be the crux of what makes this series what it is, because the other characters don't really pull it. Her trying to find these people by falling in love with them and doing whatever she can by stalking, breaking, entering, or whatever she has to do to get the criminal to try to notice her and fall in love with her. That is the interesting part of the story, and that is the saving grace of this story. It is a good series, but also on the bottom of my list. Not to say it's bad. It's definitely bad, better than all the other series that were in the previous run, besides Mashley. I don't think Mashley was in the previous run, though. But anyway, let's get on to number three. <laughs> For number three, we have The Elusive Samurai, and this series is actually made by the creator of Assassination Classroom. So I had a lot of hype coming into the series. I was really excited for it. I was really... I had a lot of expectations for what this was going to be, and I'm not going to lie. The first two chapters almost made me drop it the first chapter especially almost made me drop it because it really felt like I was just reading a history book and watching a history lesson instead of actually an action-packed story but the thing that made me love the series more than I tell C was the fight in chapter three it was losing me but it pulled me right back in with that fight because it was so good it was such a well action-packed fight and I loved it and it shows that there's a lot of potential for where the story can go for the battles and it really pulled me back in and made me in 
more interested in the world based on this fight and all the betrayal that really happened because basically what happens in the beginning of it is just your basic t tale of someone you expected it really gave me a yon of the dawn vibe to be honest because the most powerful person or everyone who like everybody loved and everybody adored and the most powerful person ended up becoming bad and was trying to take over the kingdom and like kills everybody there's a lot of stuff like that but overall this character himself hojo tokiyuki i believe his name is yes he is the next in the line for the throne his dad is the emperor and he does not want to be the emperor he doesn't really care he is a coward everyone calls him and he's very very good at being elusive and running away and dodging that is kind of his thing his dad's a puppet for the empire or all the other people in the board who really rule him i don't know what it is i can't remember it at the moment but the people who basically and are his advisors or whatever are the people who are actually ruling the country and he's kind of just a puppet so what happens is the person who hoji really loves is the person who betrays the kingdom and slaughters everybody and what happens is a shrine maid and a shrine priest end up showing up saving him from that so he doesn't end up dying and they start to try to get back the kingdom and the shrine priest is really wacky and he has some divine like stuff seeing the future and then so do all the shrine priests are doing something else in there i think they're getting the next in the line to defend hoji till he's able to become the ruler again this is actually pretty good if you like your japan historical stuff you'll really enjoy it because that's what it very much heavily relies on i don't know how true the story is but it really talks about how this is like a true story or like they're like he's someone in the history books that people forget so i don't know if they're just making that up or he's just making that up the mangaka or if that's actually true and he actually did do not obviously to this degree but something like this where he was like a samurai who actually ran away and so people didn't really want to talk about him but anyway the story itself if you don't like historical samurais you probably won't enjoy the series because that is very much what it is it will feel like a history lesson at least the first chapter did to me personally but as it progresses it got a little bit better into the more of the action packed like coming back for the kingdom thing it drew me back in with those later chapters and that final battle was so well done it was so well choreographed i loved it so much it was action packed i really like seeing how hoji used his elusiveness to his ability to his advantage and all the other stuff he did for it was really really well done and it was just Ugh, it's divine it made me all back in on the series and i really do recommend you guys watch watching this or reading this not not watch it it's not on it's on anime the entire story plot is laid out so it's easy to follow where you think this story is going to go and where it actually is going to go the twists and turns along the way are going to be really what you enjoy and let's see how this journey goes because now i'm a little bit more interested with the journey to see that these fights might actually be action-packed and really really fun to enjoy and watch but anyway let's get on to number two for number two, we have a series called Witch Watch, and now this is also by an established creator in Shonen Jump who has already made a previous series, actually two previous series in Shonen Jump, and the first one is Skeet Dance, and the other one, which you guys probably would know more about, and that is Astro Lost in Space, which is an amazing sci-fi series, and Skeet Dance is a really funny series, so this one also I had a lot of high hopes for, and with only one chapter out, I can say I'm thoroughly impressed with it. It is very well done, it is very good, I like where this premise could go the longevity of it of the comedy and things like this i don't know how it will pan out because what really is the biggest problem with this is i don't know if it's going to end up as an action series or a comedy series and that's the biggest problem but there's only one chapter and i'm excited to see where it's going to go and i really like this one the art is very very good and the story follows two characters nico who's a witch and otogi who is an ogre and basically what an ogre is is a familiar who breeded with a human and then over the years they became ogres and became their human shape and what happens is nico decides to come back and wants otogi to be her familiar because she he is her childhood friend and she wants to see her again hit him again now, Otsuki is a bit more of that brash, you know, no smile, no nonsense kind of guy, and he has monster strength, and at the beginning of the story, you can tell that he doesn't really like to use it, because after one time of using it on the neighborhood bully, he absolutely pummeled him and almost killed the kid, so now he's really afraid to be using his power, because he doesn't want to hurt anybody or kill anybody, and he's afraid of that power, but his dad kind of pushes him back into telling him that he needs to use his power, but know it responsibly, kind of like the Sith, not the Sith, the Jedi. And he doesn't want to use his power because he's very nervous about killing or hurting somebody because he almost killed the neighborhood bully one time when he was a kid. 
because of his strength and now he's afraid of it but his dad kind of pushes him back into using it responsibly karate kid miyagi style and he ends up at the end of the story deciding to use his strength again to help nico who conveniently was messing around with her magic when she shows back up and turns herself into a 2d version of herself like and she's light as paper and ends up stuck behind a crack and they have to break the wall for her to get out so the comedy elements of this first chapter is pretty good i enjoyed it i enjoy the characters and how they go back and forth with each other it's funny the other characters characters that are involved like the bully or whatever he's pretty funny and i'm excited to see where the story is going to pan out and go that's the biggest problem with it is i don't know about again the longevity of these series is always so hard to tell with the first chapter you can tell if it's going to last a while is what but i just don't know where it could really go in the direction direction is going to go with it and if this gimmick of those two wants to be familiar and then the witch thing is going to pan out or if it's going to get really stale depending on how they take it with this direction but he knows what he's doing. He's already had two successful series, so I believe he's going to be able to continue that stride and have another successful series. And let's get on to number one. <laughs> For number one, without a single doubt in my mind, is a series called Sakamoto Days. Now, this series follows Sakamoto, who is the number one hitman in all of Japan in the world, I believe, and he decides one day that he's just going to give it up. And why does he give it up? And that's because he fell in love and ends up starting a family. So he ends up quitting his hitman life, giving it all up completely, having a family, and he ends up getting very, very out of shape. But this does not stop people wanting to come take him out because once you're in the league of that, you can't go out unscathed. So along comes a hitman named Shin, who is a clairvoyant, meaning he can read people's minds. Now, as this progresses, Shin tries to kill him, but at the end of the story, as it progresses, he sees that the people who hired him try to betray him and kill him, and then Sakamoto saves him, and he ends up joining Sakamoto in his store and defending Sakamoto and starting an honest and good life. Now, that is how the series progresses. The art itself is so brutal and so good i love the detailed rough sketches that it kind of feels like but it's also very well defined and great it kind of gives me i wouldn't say a vinland it's like maybe like a little bit less of a detail of a vinland saga vibe because it's very good it's very brutal it's very very entertaining to see how the art is and like the crazy like scenes that he has like in his mind when shin like reads sakamoto's mind and even pictures like killing somebody or like when he's like punches somebody it's so detailed and just like crazy over the top and strong is awesome i love it the characters themselves sakamoto shin the two kids his wife and her kid are just mm, so good so good really cute really funny and shin himself is really entertaining he's cool i like his character i like sakamoto and then the character ends up panning out later who is i'm not gonna get into that for spoilers but she's really cool too i like her character i like all these characters it's a very funny and entertaining series the biggest problem with this series is again I don't know how much this gimmick is going to pan out because Sakamoto is just right now having assassins trying to kill him. How often are they going to be able to keep having assassins come at him before it's not funny or entertaining anymore or just very, very stale? But other than that, how strong this series has started is just phenomenal. It is without a doubt so entertaining and the best series in Shonen Jump out of these four. It's so good. It really has a potential long runtime if they do this right. Maybe him having to go back into his old Hitman ways and trying to defend his family if they ends up getting captured or getting kidnapped completely. There's a lot of things that can go into this, and I'm very, very entertained to see how this it could end up panning out. And it has a lot of potential as a long-running series in Shonen Jump with its uniqueness and crazy over-the-top characters. It's very, very good. And... Thank you guys so much for watching. Please make sure to like, comment, and subscribe if you feel that you enjoyed this video. And... That is all I have to say, so without further ado, dubs not subs.